Hello and welcome back to the 2023 Eastern Florida State College Juco Shootout. I'm Christian Repose alongside my co-host Skylar Blaine. Skylar, an amazing first game between Northwest and Florida Southern, but we have the home team playing Eastern Florida State College versus the Gulf, Gulf Coast State Commodores. What does Eastern Florida need to do today to take home the W? Continue what they've been doing. They're on a three-game winning streak. They're firing at all cylinders, whether that's in the perimeter, transition offense, uh, the interior, uh, high IQ basketball. Just continue to do what they do. The formula works. Stick to it. And on the other side of Gulf Coast, what do they have to do to go away with a win against this home team, Eastern Florida? They're coming off a loss of Trinity Valley by 37 points, so they're definitely looking to get off the losing trend but it's going to be a tough ask because you're, you're going on the road and it's not just your traditional road game it's a showcase so you have fans in the stands they're going to be rooting for that team so there's going to be an extra added level of adversity they're going to have to overcome to get the w on the road we got some time to look over some players to watch for who do you have ranked on your list from golf golf coast state I got the freshman Andre Young. He leads the, uh, the team with 12.2 points a game, but other than scoring, it's playmaking ability. It's on-ball skills. It's being able to create uh, with and without the ball. And uh, another freshman, underclassman, really, for these guys. You got Jackson Ellingsworth, too. Same thing. Uh, creates um, a lot of pressure on the defensive end uh, with the off-ball movement and just being able to knock down shots and, and take, advantage of, uh, take advantage of opportunities, excuse me, when you get them. Yeah, and these two teams, they haven't played each other since 2015. That is eight years in difference. Who do you have on your Eastern Florida State side? Because obviously nobody else from 2015. Not a lot of familiarity. You know, <laughs> there's that eight-year gap. Uh, it's been a long, I mean, were you even in high school in 2015? Uh, I mean, no, I wasn't. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been a long time, but with no familiarity, that means they're going to be able to play loose. You're not going to, you don't get a lot of game plans in, in these shootouts and these showcases. It's really great defense and, and, and it's just great offense at the same time. You're just going to get a lot of high level basketball. And as you saw from the last game, are you not impressed? You know, <laughs> it's going to be a great time. And we mentioned earlier, it's not just about the playing aspect. It's also about how they react to the bad things like stolen turnovers, missed shots. What are you, what are you looking for from those players today? I'm just looking for a nice, clean basketball, uh, great rotational switches. And what I mean by that is is if you're getting caught up on a screen, you're communicating with, the, with, with your guys and with your team. And that's what these scouts are looking for. These scouts are, are looking for players that are can do everything well in every facet of the game, not just put the ball in the hoop. And very last, we have to go end this with a take your pick. Who do you have in this game going home with the victory? Hey, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay on the great side of the crowd. We're going to go with Eastern State <laughs> College. Uh, I think they, uh, East, excuse me, Eastern Florida State College, I think they bring home the dub, and that way I can drive home safe. <laughs> I have the same pick, Eastern Florida State on top for me. They're shooting 50% from the field so far this season, averaging 88.2 points. Our last game didn't even go above 80 points. If Eastern Florida is able to do that here, it will be a very good game for them. On the other side of this break we're going to take, we have Joseph Lemelin and Carlos Mancia on the call for this game between the Gulf Coast State College and Eastern Florida State. We'll be right back.
Good afternoon and welcome into the 22nd annual JUCO Men's Shootout. My name is Joseph Lemelin alongside Carlos Mancia. We have a battle coming up here today between the Eastern Florida State College Titans, who currently hold a record of 8-1 on a three-game win streak, taking on the Gulf Coast State College Commodores, who have a record of 7-3. and three. They started this season with a nice little win streak, but today they're looking to get back in the win column. Carlos, we talked about before the game the importance of getting into the interior. What do you think about that? Oh, most definitely, especially since um, these are two teams that don't really shoot many three balls. They like to get their work done inside. After all, Eastern Florida State averaging upwards of nearly 90 a game on 50% shooting, though they do not shoot the three ball at a high volume. Likewise, Gulf Coast State, a team that doesn't shoot well from the field in comparison, but again, a lot of their scoring comes from inside. Exactly, that's what it's all gonna come down to today. As you said, not the highest three-point percentage ever, uh, and they both have sub-30%, but again, both teams are very much scoring. Both teams love scoring. Eastern Florida State averaging just around 80 points per game, and Gulf Coast State averaging just around 76 points per game. And as we're getting the starting lineups set here, let's go over our starting lineups. First off, let's start with the home team, Eastern, Eastern Florida uh, Titans, excuse me. Starting off first at guard, Carlos Corjito. Second up, Afan Trenka. Third, we have Matija Zuzic. And then at our forwards, Luka Kolsig and Owen Aquino. Next up, we have the starters for Gulf Coast State University. First off, we have Tahi Johnson, Marcus Black, Christian Harmon, Andre Young, and Jackson Ellingworth. As you mentioned, Jackson Ellingworth been out for a couple of games. Gulf Coast starting out quick here, getting to the basket, but quickly rebounded by Eastern Florida. Size to be a factor in this one. No one taller than 6'9 in the Gulf Coast State lineup. Yeah, Owen Aquino going to work early here, kicking it to the corner for three. Off front iron, but offensive rebound. Kicks it back out. Zuzic to the rim. No good, Gulf Coast gonna take it back the other way. But some quick offensive rebounds early there. Showing the, the thing about being a good inside scoring team is it opens things up outside. As that three ball goes down. And a quick lead here for Gulf Coast. And they're putting the pressure on here early with a full court defense. That's gonna force Eastern Florida to take a timeout here. Very quick early in this game. This is a defense uh, for Gulf Coast State that, um, again, is giving up high percentage shooting. And, uh, but good start here, like you mentioned, with that press uh, forcing the timeout. Yeah, absolutely. It looks like Eastern Florida might have to rethink their game plan here in the beginning. Maybe it didn't look like they were prepared for that full court defense to come out. But the importance of it is showing here as Eastern Florida coming out of the huddle with a game plan here. As Gulf Coast leads 3-0. Quick three from Luca. Again, showing full court pressure is Gulf Coast State on this inbound. And their face defense is really what is stopping them from being able to inbound the ball as they get it in. To the point guard, Carlos Corjito. He's gonna bring the ball up. Speedy, kicking it back to the corner to Carlos. Oh, and Aquino. Corjito slipping. Dribble. Gets his footing back, nice back cut. door. Cut off quickly by Gulf Coast, going the other way, slamming it home. And one. That's what they're gonna be calling here, so he's gonna go to the line. Basket's good. Great job shutting things down in the half court from Gulf Coast State, creating that fast break opportunity. Yeah, Taj Johnson is only a freshman, and he is getting all the way up there. So again, Gulf Coast with the early lead, 5-0. Chance to make it six. He will. Hits it, just shooting 43% at the line this season. 
Again, Eastern Florida coming into this game as a favorite with an eight and one record. And loses the ball there. Eastern Florida resetting here at the top. 15 on the shot clock. Great job sealing the baseline. Oh, and Aquino looking, taking to the basket, but it's stripped away. Gulf Coast going the other way with it. Picking up the pace, but kicking it out to the corner. Oh. And taken away by Eastern Florida. And again, pushing the pace is Luca. And just barely off the mark there as Afan Trenka went up for the layup. Trenka with a good eyes for the rim there, but again, sealing it off inside is uh, the Commodores making, getting it done. A lot of off-ball movement, gets Gulf Coast wide open, but a great rebound there by Owen. Gulf Coast really crashing those offensive boards. Ooh, good attempt at the lay there from Luca Kosik. Aquino for a big, that was um, well done bringing the ball up the floor. Christian Harmon at the left almost. Oh, and there's gonna be a foul called on the floor there. We'll see who it's on here. Our referees today are gonna be Chad Bogendame, Chip Clark, and Nick Agris. So they're gonna call an on the floor foul here. Gulf Coast will get the ball at the baseline. The foul was on Owen Aquino. Andre Young picking the ball out. Ball is loose. Andre's got his hands on it though. Young, a very prolific scorer for this team, averaging just over 12 a game on decent shooting at that. Taking oh. it to the hoop. Oh, good move there, but not able to get it down. And it looks oh. like Marcus Black was just going for a steal there, but. Like Aquino got whacked in the face. Yeah, exactly. So, ball's still going the other way for Eastern Florida, as they're still looking to get on the board here. We're three minutes into this game. Just a ton of defense from Gulf Coast here. Again, this face defense on the full court is what is stopping Eastern Florida from getting open. And I think we have a shot clock problem here. Maybe they're. We'll just get it reset. Matthias Malamut's already in for Zuzik. As is. And uh, straight to the basket, almost goes in. Oh, Gulf Coast, great defensive rebound, pushing the pace. Straight to the rack, no good off the layup. Another defensive rebound. Quite a few missed layups here in the early minutes of the first quarter, both teams still warming up. Trink with the three, no good, off the mark. Swinging it around, Owen looking for an open teammate. Oh, nice. And puts it up and in. Nice job winning the cut, but you mentioned it just before that teams have been struggling inside, particularly finishing at the rim. I think that's credit to both of these defenses for knowing that like we mentioned off the top, that the paint squ uh, scoring is a strength for both of these teams. Exactly, and that scoring comes with a lot of defense as well. I know both of these teams average quite a few points per game. However, both these teams have a very solid defense, so it's not looking like we're going to have a, a super high scoring game here or anything like that. And here comes Gulf Coast for oh, the drive. Screen. For three, off the mark left, and he'll save that, so Afan is gonna be pushing this pace up the court. And it looks like there's gonna be a foul on his way down there. It doesn't look like he was in the shooting motion, no, so it's gonna be on the floor. Eastern Florida now taking it from the baseline. And Owen oh, wide nice open five. underneath. Oh, and had a little something to say to him afterwards as well. Kino averaging 14 a game, getting his scoring going now. It's exactly who they need to start the scoring as they'll look to him a lot of this game. It's Engram up there, passing it up to Bryce Simmons. 
Simmons still looking for someone. One second on the shot clock, off the mark. And the refs say it did not hit the rim, so either way it would have been Eastern Florida ball, but they'll get to reset now. I think off the ball, the length defensively for the Titans and with Andrija Bukmirovic really altered the chance um, for the Commodores to, get, Commodores to get off a quality shot attempt. And Eastern Florida now getting open a lot easier than they were at the beginning of the game, figuring out this full court. It looks like the full court gives up once Eastern Florida has inbounded it. They're more just looking for that steal or a five second or maybe a wasted timeout. And good take into the basket. And again, as you were talking about Andrea Bukmerovic, there he is again, coming up big to tie up this game. Big guy for them off the bench, averaging about 14 minutes per game and is a very effective shooter in that time. Uh, did have a 25 point game back on the 16th. And we're gonna have another timeout here. So from Melbourne, Florida and Eastern Florida State College, you're following the 22nd annual Florida College men's basketball shootout. Timeout on the floor. Game is all tied up right now, 6-6. This is the 22nd annual Florida College men's basketball shootout. Build a successful career with a bachelor's degree from Eastern Florida State College. You can choose from nearly 25 tracks in today's top job fields of business, healthcare, and computer technologies with classes tailored to meet your needs on campus and online. A bright future awaits you with a bachelor's degree from Eastern Florida State College. To learn more, visit easternflorida.edu slash go slash bachelors. Welcome back to Eastern Florida State College in Melbourne, Florida at the 22nd annual JUCO shootout. Right now it is all tied up 6-6. Six to six, And there is about 15 minutes left to play in the first half. Carlos, what's been going on so far in the beginning of this game? I think the real tone center thus far has been the defense without question. I mean, we saw right out of the gate that Gulf Coast State was applying pressure, forced the timeout. A um, couple of sloppy passes on both ends now. Um, it created opportunities. But uh, offensively, it seems like Eastern Florida State is starting to find a little bit of a rhythm when they push the pace up the floor. Yeah, it's really coming down to the defense, whether that be half court or full court defense, both playing very tough as Gulf Coast inbounding now. DeAndrea Washington kicks it back out. Three-second call. Good call. Coach was yelling for that one. I'll come in. Two highly decorated coaches here today in this game. Coach Shulman of the Eastern Florida just got elected, in, inducted into the FCSAA Men's Basketball Hall of Fame 2023. First coach from East Florida State College to do so since 2002. 328 wins. Hard to argue with that. Exactly. He's leading a great program. Here as Owen Aquino to the basket. Oh, nice oh. find. Good drop off and a, and a defensive foul there. That's going to be called on Christian Harmon. So again, not a shooting foul as the ball was loose. So it's, I believe it's going to be a loose ball foul there. That was Malamik who is going to be heading to the line. Had a good. I really like that cut he made to get to the basket there and create that look and get to the line now. Yes, and that, that was a great call to call this a shooting foul. He was in the shooting motion uh, when he got the ball in his hands, and that's ultimately where he got fouled. So he'll hit the first free throw, and they'll take the lead here. Malik's a guy that started the season off slow, was 0 for 4 from the field through his first four games. Since then, he is 12 of 17 over his last five. Really tearing it up as he knocks down the second free throw and gives Eastern Florida their first lead of the game. Gulf Coast was leading 6-0 here with 17 minutes to go. And in less than two and a half minutes, Eastern Florida has retaken this lead. Christian Harris with the ball. Dribble drive in. Nice dump off. And kick out to Turner Harris. He's going to take a little jump shot. No good. And Owen Aquino rising up above the rim to get that rebound. And Aquino, the center, going to be taking it up. 
And a fake pass off. He's got good handles for a big. Kick out, 4-3. In. Three. One of the few three-pointers we've seen in this game so far. Again, just a very interior on both teams. However, a great shot there. They've got the mismatch there in the post. And they'll take advantage of it, but the layup's no good. But they, Gulf Coast still with control of the ball, taking it inside. All muscle there as he gets to. Don't think he was quite ready for that pass. Still able to get the job done. Jackson Ellingsworth has missed the last few games, so maybe bumping off a little bit of rust here, but not taking long at all as he is. As they kick it out to the corner, taking it in. Out to Aquino, off the mark. But Eastern Florida with another offensive rebound. 4-3, Carlos. And off the mark. Eastern Florida almost saved it. Great effort. Great effort. Chip's gonna call that one out of bounds. They're gonna be coming back this way. And we saw with those offensive rebounds for a team that's as good in the paint as them, it's no surprise that they've been able to crash the glass so well here early on. And Gulf Coast bringing it up the floor now. They're trailing by three. Again, Ellingsworth inside with a mismatch. And that's going to be a foul called on A.J. Walker. He had an elbow kind of stuck into the big man down there. And uh, Jackson Ellingsworth. And that ultimately caused the foul call there. But, you know, you might want to see that because without that, Jackson right. Ellingsworth has an easy layup. Right, that's a 13-inch height difference with the 6'9 um, Ellingsworth and the 5'8 Walker. So massive size advantage as the refs talk out a call here and it's going to be Gulf Coast ball Christian Harris inbounding gets it inside to the rim and great defense there Eastern Florida with a break AJ Walker two and and they're going to call that a blocking foul yeah, I think he was still moving. Should be on Andre Young. Fifth team foul, so. So it'll be Andreja at the line. He'll knock down the first one. Andrea averaging eight this season. Knocks down the second one. Also seven boards for Bukranovic, so yeah, and he's versatile, can play the backcourt as well, especially or as well as playing up front. Exactly. Points barely begin to tell the story as Christian Harris knocks down a three. That'll cut the lead even more. Eastern Florida pushing this pace fast. Kicking it out to AJ Walker. A.J. Walker with a drive the in. <laughs> and the basket is not going to count. They're going to call a foul on the floor. On e the, the foul was on Emondrick Erkins Ford, so he will not be at the line. He'll probably take it out at the baseline. But either way, Eastern Florida ball as Carlos Cortillo checks right back in. Foul number four, Marcus Black, his second. Second on black, they've uh, Efren Trinka heading to the bench. They've gotten solid production out of him in these eight minutes. Absolutely, he's done exactly what he's needed to do. As Eastern Florida gets the ball in, looking for a foul and another one here. Fouls on number 23, Jackson Ellingsworth, this second, team seven. And we're gonna be getting to the bonus very early here. Still 12 minutes to go and we're getting one and one. That's the second foul on Ellingsworth, seventh team foul as you just mentioned. But it seems um, the last two possessions they've been looking for Erkskins Ford. 
the Chicago native in the post and trying to establish something there, which again has been a theme of this game thus far. Exactly, so far the layups may not have been falling as much, however, with Eastern Florida in the one and one it's gonna change a lot because they'll, they'll have the opportunity to, you know, if they get fouled or offensive fouls or anything like that, they'll have an opportunity to get to the line. And those are more guaranteed points than layups sometimes, especially with great defensive teams like this. They are shooting under 70% at the line, however, so uh, you can take what you can get. He hits them both here. I believe they're 100% from the line so far today. I believe both teams are as yes. Gulf Coast. Andre Young. Christian Harris, couple moves, back out to Young. Looking for a screen now. Despite the lack of size from Walker, I like how he's sticking with the play defensively. And he did, and he knocks that ball right out of his hands. A clean steal right there, and A.J. Walker bringing the, that ball up now. And a good oh. starter step back. Oh, just rims out. So Eastern Florida, a lot more pressure on the backcourt, diving for the ball. But a foul is going to be called here. I believe it's going to be on Eastern Florida. That would be their fifth team foul. No, it's not going to oh. be. That's going to be a foul call on Gulf Coast here. As they say that he pushed uh, the player down as he went for the ball. So A.J. Walker is going to get a one and one I believe. Yes, one and one the second foul on I believe that was Young who was called for it. It's again a one and one situation as you alluded to before. And the Titans now lead 15 to 11, 16 to 11 as they knock down that free throw. Gulf Coast led most of the way, but Eastern Florida changing that around. And they're doing so by getting inside and getting whistles um, by uh, just trying to be the more physical team and it's paid off for them at the line. They're perfect so far. Exactly. You can tell that there's been a little bit of a change in the game plan here from Coach Shulman. Like the use of the screen by uh, Oduda. And down to the mismatch. A.J. Walker was down there defending and somehow able to escape. A.J. Walker now bringing the ball up. He's done a terrific job on defense today and bringing that ball up. Now Carlos Cortillo trying to set up a screen. He will. And a good roll. Oh, just barely overpassed. Not sure if they were looking for Bukramovic there. Yes, I, they, I believe he was maybe just a little bit overthrown there. Not exactly sure what happened, but again, six-point lead here as Gulf Coast bringing it up. Eastern Gulf Coast kick out. Bang for three. three Harmon. Again, not a lot of three-pointers this game. And I believe we're going to get another timeout here. It was, it was a shift to zone there that gave Gulf Coast State that good look from downtown. Well, from Melbourne, Florida and Eastern Florida State College, you've been following the 22nd Annual Florida College Men's Basketball Shootout. There's a timeout right now. Eastern Florida leads 17 to 14. This is the 22nd Annual Florida College Men's Basketball Shootout. Welcome back into the 22nd annual JUCO Men's Shootout here. We have a very close game as Eastern Florida now has the lead 17 to 14. This game started off a little bit differently. It started with all the momentum with Gulf Coast. 
What's been going on, Carlos? I just think that uh, Eastern Florida State is taking their time, finding their spot, and getting quality looks inside where they like to feast. Exactly, and that's, it. that's all it's been. It's been Andreja with Eastern Florida and all of their other big men, including Imondrek, and they have been creating the opportunities for Eastern Florida down low and been able to get them into the bonus now. Correct, that is now 18 fouls on Gulf State thus far. Just not even midway now through the first half. And Eastern Florida, a tough inbounding here. A.J. Walker quick enough to go collect the ball, and he's going to run out of that trap. Imondrick with the ball inside, wrestling with three players. Carlos got the ball back into Imondrick. Nice. Like the patience there from Cajito to find the cutter. Exactly. They waited. They didn't force any shots. And they got the one that they wanted. Got a five-point lead now. 19-14. With just under 10 minutes to go. Going to get a foul on the floor here. Foul on Eastern Florida State as they get a little closer to the bonus. Right. They'll be, um, the Commodores will be shooting from here on out. And that's, that was going to be a fun matchup, those two bigs that like the post and are solid defenders. Yeah, exactly. And right there we just saw a foul just because he was holding him a little bit too much. Just He just got caught on underneath his arm, maybe not even super intentional, just got caught. Second on Erskine's Ford. Good defense here, but they're going to call a foul on it. So now Gulf Coast heading to the line. Christian Harris. He'll be shooting three free throws here. A chance to really get back into this game. And the first one is in. Harmon Lee Rochester, New York native, averaging about five a game. Started two of his 10 games this season. And we'll get some substitutions here for Gulf Coast and for Eastern Florida. By the way, he's hit two free throws on this trip. He's only hit one coming into this game. Huh. Big difference this game has made with all of the fouls. Just two very physical basketball teams duking it out. And another Eastern Florida inbound. They're always a little bit tough as A.J. Walker not able to get open, but Luca Kosig was able to get it. Give it off to Owen Aquino. Feels like uh, Gulf Coast has gone back to that full court pressure that worked for them right out of the gate. A.J. Walker for three from the corner. And that'll bring their lead right back to five. Walker, not a very prolific three-point shooter, able to get the job done there with a clean look. Yeah, at this point, both teams might need a little bit of shooting to pull through and maybe break away here as this game's been very close. And they've been getting it because these big physical bodies inside are attracting attention, leaving guys open at the perimeter. And the eighth foul now, so that'll be one and one for Gulf Coast. So we'll see if he can cut into the lead some more here. Again, one and one. If he misses, Eastern Florida can rebound, and they will. So Carlos Cortijo pushing the pace here all the way up, slowing up at the three-point line, however. Off to Aquino. Aquino making a post move, and it's a two-on-one. Good job keeping his pivot foot, too. Exactly, no travel there as A.J. Walker finding a hole. And that's going to be picked off. Gulf Coast going the other way. Up and blocked. Sent away by Luca Kolsig. So A.J. Walker now will take it the other way. You saw the second that Gulf Coast State recovered possession of the ball, Kolsig was looking to protect the rim almost right away.
And everyone on the floor as Eastern Florida is going to come out with it. Uh, Luca pushing to the rim and back out. Carlos just off and great up by Batus Malovic. He put that one right back. That's extend the lead. That possession could easily be defined by one word, and that's hustle. The fact that they were able to diving on the floor for those loose balls several times, it looked like they'd lost it, and then the following with the tip layup. And another big rebound here from Luca, and they're pushing the pace again. Carlos Cortillo right to the basket. A uh, one on three at that. Great move there. Both teams really pushing the pace now, Just trying to get it quick, bus quick buckets, easy buckets. And we're going to get a timeout here. And again, so we have a timeout on the floor uh, from Gulf Coast. And the Eastern Florida leads right now 26 to 17. This is the 22nd annual Florida College men's basketball shootout. And welcome back into Melbourne, Florida. We are here at the 22nd annual JUCO shootout. Eastern Florida State College currently leads 26 Gulf Coast University 17. And Eastern and Gulf Coast will be taking the ball out of bounds here. Engram gets the ball in quickly. Tagging it down. Very active Outside. screen. Quick passes here. And quick passes lead to a wide open three from Bryce Simmons. And that's exactly what ball movement can do for you. Jamari Piercy was big on that possession, creating space to create those opportunities with those off ball screens. Eastern Florida just barely able to get the ball back inbounds. Owen Aquino to the basket. Ball's loose. Gulf Coast comes away with it. Taking it the other way, and no good, but off Eastern Florida. So it's going to be back to Gulf Coast. Jamari Piercy got the steal and took it all the way back. And it's going to be Gulf Coast ball again. Bryce Simmons kick out for three off the front rim. Good job on that curl to get, to get it done quick enough to have that clean look. Carlos Cortillo to the basket off the front rim, and that's going to be a late whistle there. It's going to be two shots. Carlos Cortillo took that one all the way in, and it looks like might have gotten him right on the arm and sent him to the floor, but he'll get two shots now. And Cortillo, we've seen his aggressiveness. Uh, today, particularly offensively, trying to score. After all, he is shooting 48% in this building as opposed to 30% everywhere else this season. Definitely shooting a lot better here at home, and we can see that here as his first one just barely misses. However, Eastern Florida is still leading this 26 to 20 with about six and a half minutes left to go in this half. Quartzy Hill also represented the Puerto Rican national team at one point, so. He's got some big accomplishments mm. to his name thus far, despite being a college freshman. I can't imagine uh, any of us were representing our country when we were college freshmen, no. were we not? No. And that's that's many. Yeah. Uh, there was another player on Eastern Florida, Owen Aquino, he played for his team and with a U20 FIBA World Cup. And all the way down and won. Nice outlet there. And that's going to be a slam home from Luca Cole Sieg, who went up and got fouled. Cole Sieg is a college sophomore again, doing things that we never got to do, and he played in March Madness last year with uh, Montana State. 
So he's definitely, he's got the experience and he's showing it off now with a big contact dunk there. So we'll get some substitutions here and let's see if Eastern Florida can take a double digit lead. Cole Sieg also big on the glass this year. Um, earlier, last, earlier last month he had six offensive rebounds out of his 14 in a game. So this will be our largest lead of the game by far, 30 to 20. However, Gulf Coast has not led since six to four with 15 minutes to go. Like this pressure by Trinka right now as they're bringing the ball up the floor. It's exactly what they need. They need to slow down Gulf Coast even more than they already have. And, and there's a big tip. Trinka taking it down the other way. Dumps it off to Carlos, back out for three. Off the mark, good effort by Carlos. Jamari Piercy taking it the other way. Oh, oh. big put back from Taj Johnson. Taj Johnson. That one coming off the rim and put back dunk. Make this an eight point game. Johnson making up for the last possession where he was trapped and turned the ball over. All that matters is hustling on in the next play. Owen Aquino picking up the ball here. He was able to go back court since it was deflected. Mm -hmm. And Afan Trenko with five seconds on the shot clock. Carlos Cortillo, he's going to have to pull it from there. And didn't get any part of the rim, so that's going to be a shot clock violation. I don't, uh, it doesn't look like he knew exactly how much time was on the shot clock as he looked to the, his coach after. Though at the same time, I got to give credit to Gulf State College for the way they pressured the three point line and forced them to sort of force something up that was not a quality look and sealing off the paint. Exactly. You got 30 seconds from when you start bringing the ball up. So it, it ends up being a long time. So when you get down to those final five seconds on the shot clock and you're, are, and you're so far behind the three point line, that's all because of Gulf Coast defense stepping up. Jackson Ellingsworth with a travel there. Seems like he didn't know who to pass it to. Nope. And so may have just misstepped. So that'll be Eastern Florida ball. Eight point game now. Media timeout. And as we get a media timeout uh, from Melbourne, Florida and Eastern Florida State College, you're following the 22nd annual Florida College men's basketball shootout. It's been a timeout here. Currently, Eastern Florida leads 30 to 22. This is the 22nd annual Florida College men's basketball shootout. Welcome back to Eastern Florida State College here in Melbourne, Florida, and the 22nd annual JUCO shootout. Eastern Florida College State Titans currently lead with 30 points against Gulf Coast. Currently has 22 points. Currently have just under five minutes to go here in the first half. It's been pretty close throughout the half. I really, the score now. I really like the effort that uh, both teams have done of late of trying to create in transition. Both teams are being aggressive defensively, which is creating those opportunities. And Owen Aquino loses the ball there. That's going to oh. give Jamari Piercy an opportunity. Bring it all the way. And one. And another big play from Jamari Piercy. He's going to get back to the line. There's one of those transition opportunities I just alluded to. There was a good contest to try and take away the dunk. 
but at that point, they forced the N1 instead. Yeah. Not sure if it's the best advice, but, you know, I was always told that if you're going to foul a guy at the rim, you got to do it hard enough where he's not going to score that ball because, you know, in this opportunity now, they just get an N1. So mm, they'll have a five point deficit now. And just a couple of minutes ago, they had a 10 point lead. So it just really shows that either team can come back extremely fast, especially while playing a full court defense. A fantastic adjustment there too by Piercy to adjust from that uh, Tomahawk stuff that he was trying to pull off instead resorting to that floater. Afantranka kicking it around. Owen Aquino back out to the corner for three. Off the mark. So Gulf Coast getting the ball, pushing the pace all the way up. Just barely overpassed there off the hands of Taj Johnson. So Eastern Florida getting the ball back here. Just over four minutes to go. And again, five minute, five point lead for Eastern Florida as they look to inbound the ball. It's been a struggle all night, but that one's easy as Gulf Coast gets tripped up. Afan Tranka kicking it to the corner. Three ball is off, but Owen Aquino gets stripped underneath the basket and picked off by Afan Tranka. A lot of fast-paced basketball going on now. And Aquino in the paint. One-on-one. -on -one, back out to the corner. History's good. good. Good ball movement, movement, bringing the bodies inside, leaving those shooters open. Exactly. Great ball movement. Ended up Zuzic three. And a three ball from Gulf Coast off the mark. Offensive rebound, which has been the tale of this game for both teams. Bryce Simmons resetting a little bit. With 10 seconds left on the shot clock, screen right, he'll take it. There's mismatch inside, they find it. And they got the mismatch with two. One second on the shot clock, and that's good. Buries the three. That's gonna be Engram with the three. And Eastern Florida with a five point lead here. Bringing it up the court. In a game that's been all about pace the last couple of minutes. Seems like Eastern Florida wants to take control and slow things down a little bit, leaving Walker to be trapped here. And good take, block Whoa. from behind. Oh, but pass right back to him, and he's gonna get up and in. There's a lot of great ball contact there, but he was able to muscle through it and get that ball in. As Gulf Coast now, maybe slowing down a little bit. It's been a lot of fast-paced basketball here. Problem with that is if this game gets um, tight light, attrition may be a factor. Jamari Piercy looking for something. He gets it. Five seconds to go on the shot clock oh, nice to the basket. Step. And a big play there as he gets the layup. And again, five point game now. Afan Tranka pushing the pace, taking it all the way and a foul called there as the layup was no good. But he'll get to the line. Didn't see much there, but then again, working it inside, getting it, getting themselves to the line. Had a lot of physical basketball here, not a lot of whistles. We just had a lot of back and forths with almost no whistles. So some good basketball we're seeing here because we, we got into the bonus so early into the half that you know both teams have definitely pulled back on the fouls as Afan Tranka off the front iron. And Gulf Coast with a full new five here. To your point, we did see a lot of whistles early. That was the 10th team foul though on Gulf Coast State to the nine for the Titans. Still a lot of fouls from both teams. So, not bad. Try to extend this to a six point lead and he will. Gulf Coast taking this ball up, Andre Young. Oh, great. And some great hands from A.J. Walker, just keeping the pressure there. Trying to get that 10 second violation. And working the ball back around. Dangerous Top of the pass. key, Andre Young with a fake. And a mismatch down low. And a foul called there. You see Eastern Florida State biting on a lot of these fakes and that's because you gotta respect the shooting. Of Andre Young again, their top gun scoring wise. 
one, one thing we'll have to watch as this game goes on is the depth of both benches. When you look at Gulf Coast, they just don't have a ton of people on their bench. But when you look at Eastern Florida, they just have a lot more players ready to go, which I mean, they, they might be a lot more rested. And, and so we'll have to see if that's going to be a factor for Gulf Coast because every single player is going to be tired while Eastern Florida can keep fresh legs out on the court a lot of the times. And not just that, if you look up and down their roster, there's a lot of guys who are swing men that can play both like the two through the four. Exactly, so Gulf Coast is gonna have to cycle through as much as they can. You don't want guys out there for too long. They don't want them to get exhausted. Haven't even reached the second half yet. Got a minute 49 to go here in the first half. Eastern Florida taking it out at the baseline. And Afan Tranka bringing this ball up. Screen from Aquino is gonna help him get over the half court line. Nice and good pass. Oh, but blocked. Andrio gets it back up. Bukomerovic making a great play there to extend the lead back to six. Eastern Florida wants to go into the break with as big of a lead as they possibly can. And Gulf Coast giving it down into the paint. They had the mismatch. For three. Oh, just barely off. A.J. Walker with the rebound. And Owen Aquino looking for a screen. He'll get it. Oh. And a... And a blocking, blocking foul. Yeah, his feet definitely weren't set there as he was looking for the charge. And you're right, they were not set, but uh, it seemed like both their legs seemed to get a little tangled at one point. And I believe the ref just gave uh, Gulf Coast coach a warning for a technical foul next time. First foul on McKiss, or yeah, McKiss Engram. The Bluntstown, Florida native. So I believe Coach Phil Gaffney now has a warning. It may have been the assistant coach that got the warning. I'm not 100% sure. There was a warning, yes, directed at that bench. So they'll have to watch it now. As we saw, a technical with five seconds to go in overtime in the first game that was played here. And Owen Aquino is going to be at the line now. Did miss the first, but he has been attracting a lot of attention defensively uh, throughout this one from Gulf Coast State. Off the mark. He'll give the ball back to Gulf Coast State with just over a minute left to go in the half. No matter the guard, they seem to be extending in the backcourt to defend uh, to defend Young. Young taking it in, dish off. Great knock away. Is exactly what Eastern Florida State needed. Boom. If they want to get a big lead going into the half. Owen Aquino looking for someone to pass to, he does. Gets it to, to Noels. 15 seconds separate the clock. Noel Slavatsky looking for somebody open. He will. Carlos Cortijo kicks it back out to Owen. Great raid. Just barely off the mark there. And 15 seconds to go here. Gulf Coast pushing the pace, and they will get two more. Turner Harris cutting this lead down to four. Five seconds to go on the clock. Noel for three. Off the mark to the left, and that's going to take us to halftime. Eastern Florida State College currently leads 38 to 34. And right now, it's really looking like the interior that is what is winning the game for Eastern Florida at the moment. We're gonna have about a 15 minute halftime right here. However, before we go to break or anything like that, we will uh, have our sideline reporter with the head coach of Eastern Florida State College coming up here shortly. Carlos, what do you think the key is for Gulf Coast to come back from this? Well, I mean, the first thing, and we've seen it, though, when their, uh, run, their spurts that they've had it have come 
when they've established the game in transition and pushed the pace. Now, if they're able to do that a little more consistently, especially with the defensive pressure that the uh, Titans have been applying, um, they might be in for a good one here. The question is, though, can they not tire out quick? And, can they not tire out quickly? Is going to be the question if they can pull this off. Exactly. And right now, we're going to kick it on over to Jackson Burleson, who is currently with the head coach, head coach Shulman. Extremely physical team, and you know their goal is to foul. I hope you don't call it. And we knew it coming in, and we played teams like that before. And uh, unfortunately, we didn't live up to the, uh, you know, we, we didn't live up to our end of the bargain and play a little more physical and handle that pressure a little bit more. So second half, we're going to have to handle the pressure better. So it, that's how I thought everything else went well. Um, we got to foul less, but, uh, you know, somebody you just can't control. But, uh, you know, we got to not play with our arms on defense, but offensively, I mean, we're, we're going to have to handle the pressure and just be a little bit more mentally tough. Thank you, Coach. Welcome back into the 22nd annual Juco Ben Shootout. We're going to be back here right after the half, but from Melbourne, Florida and Eastern Florida State College, you've been following the 22nd annual Florida College Men's Basketball Shootout. We're going to be going to halftime. Right now, Eastern Florida State College leads 38. Gulf Coast State has 34. We'll be back. Build a successful career with a bachelor's degree from Eastern Florida State College. You can choose from nearly 25 tracks in today's top job fields of business, healthcare, and computer technologies, with classes tailored to meet your needs on campus and online. A bright future awaits you with a bachelor's degree from Eastern Florida State College. To learn more, visit easternflorida.edu slash go slash bachelors. Eastern Florida State College has a two-year aerospace technology degree. We are the only school in the state of Florida that offers this degree. The program is taught by industry professionals. All of the instructors are currently employed or previously employed at NASA. The program manager was part of NASA for 35 years. So you're not getting just somebody that has a degree that's teaching you stuff about aerospace. You're learning from people that actually worked in the aerospace field or currently working in the aerospace field. Welcome back to Eastern Florida State College in the 2020, 22nd annual JUCO Shootout. I'm Christian Oposo alongside Michael Schuyler Blaine. Schuyler, Eastern Florida leads Gulf Coast 38 to 34. What are you seeing from both teams? Home team, uh, Eastern State College, you know, great transition offense. They're getting out and they're, and they're pacing and they're, they're getting high quality shots, especially around the rim, really close up. Uh, they have a lot of great opportunities out in the perimeter. They just haven't been able to knock them down. But as the game progresses, you know, obviously the more you get warmed up as a shooter, the more they start to knock down. So if I'm Gulf Coast, I'd be worried about giving all those wing threes, corner threes wide open. But more uh, specifically, they're not turning the ball over, especially when Gulf Coast has been pressing the whole entire first half. Yeah, you mentioned the Gulf Coast uh, full court press the entire first half. What are your thoughts on that? Because it's leading to a lot of points for Eastern Florida. I mean, that is outrageous. I, I don't know if you're um, if you're a runner or if you ever wake up in the morning and you and you want to work out. Just going for you know 10, 15 minutes at a high pace and you get your heart rate up. That's one thing. But when you're full court pressing the whole entire half, they're using every man on their roster. Nobody is safe in terms of playing time. If you're on that bench, you're getting up out of it and you're playing in this game. Eastern Florida State is getting a lot of dribble drive penetration, and they're really kind of controlling the boards right now. What are you seeing from them, and how are they? can they better that in the second half? A lot of playmakers, again, a lot of dribble drive penetration, but when they're kicking, you have some guys that maybe are hesitant to pull that open corner three or pull that open top of the key three because they're trying to get a better shot, especially around the rim. But again, as the field keeps going, I, I, it's, it's hard for me to think that Gulf Coast is going to press the whole entire second half, especially when their whole entire bench is depleted in terms of having some rest. So 
if if the game plan switches, I think you'll want to see a lot more dribble drive kick, dribble drive kick. But I could be wrong. Again, you, you just never know in a game like this. It's a game of, of adjustments. And lastly, we're going to talk about the star player of the half for both teams. Number 22 from Eastern Florida State, Luca Kolsage, has two dunks, a block, and a tough and one right hand, and then the flex after. I mean, he said he was too little. He, he went up on the right side, one-handed yam, and one came down, looked at him, and said, why did you try you know, and then on the other side, uh, you had a bunch of other guys that were doing a lot. But again, a lot of transition offense for Gulf Coast. It seemed like the majority of their points was out in transition. And again, they have some snipers on their team now. They were shooting from the perimeter well from three when they had good looks. But again, when, when you're full court pressing the whole entire first half, you're going to get tired. So the harder you play on defense, it's going to make it a lot harder to execute on offense. Absolutely. And we should mention that Gulf Coast got out to a 6-0 run to start off the game in Eastern Florida. Obviously came back and took the lead at 38-34. That's about all the time we have for you here in this halftime coverage of the 22nd annual JUCO shootout. Christian Oposa, Skylar Blaine, we'll see you post game. Eastern Florida State College has a two-year aerospace technology degree. We are the only school in the state of Florida that offers this degree. The program is taught by industry professionals. All of the instructors are currently employed or previously employed at NASA. The program manager was part of NASA for 35 years. So you're not getting just somebody that has a degree that's teaching you stuff about aerospace. You're learning from people that actually worked in the aerospace field or currently working in the aerospace field. Build a successful career with a bachelor's degree from Eastern Florida State College. You can choose from nearly 25 tracks in today's top job fields of business, healthcare, and computer technologies with classes tailored to meet your needs on campus and online. A bright future awaits you with a bachelor's degree from Eastern Florida State College. To learn more, visit easternflorida.edu slash go slash bachelor.
Welcome back to Eastern Florida State College here in Melbourne, Florida. You are, this is the 22nd annual JUCO Men's Basketball Shootout. My name is Joseph Lemel and aside Carlos Mancia. We have a pretty close game here so far. It's Eastern Florida State College with 38 and Gulf Coast with 34. And the tempo in that first half was definitely, obviously we mentioned numerous times, was not only the pace, but both teams establishing things inside. And even when things were shut down inside, they were kicking out, they were getting things done on the outside, getting clean looks for the others. I mean, look at this. Owen Aquino, the top scorer this season for Eastern Florida State, averages about 14 a game, just has two in this first half, setting up opportunities for others, namely Andrija Bukramovic. And here we go with the second half as Luka Kolsig will inbound it right to Afan. And kicking it around to Owen Aquino. Oh, nice oh. find on the cut. Good backdoor, Carlos Corjito. Quick two points. Gulf Coast taking it up the court pretty quickly. No full court defense here from Eastern Florida as it's been all game. And Jamari Piercy kicks out. And good take inside, just barely off. Nice fun. Uh, and a good take. There. Good take in by Jackson Ellingsworth. That'll be his sixth point of the game. He had four in the first half. And Eastern Florida, great cut, Owen Aquino. And that's back-to-back -back quick layups for Eastern Florida. Again, what we talked about earlier, it's exactly what they need. Just those inside pushes, inside layups. Quick screen here. Looks like um, Gulf Coast is trying to establish some sort of off-ball movement to not much avail. And it worked there, but the pass was just barely off. They had Tahi Johnson open underneath. He's got five points so far in this game. As we'll get a sub here. We have Christian Harris come into the game. He's Harris. leading. Yeah, surprising, uh, effective in that first half. Uh, I believe he was at um, nine points. Uh, closest score to double figures for them. Book so. route. Bogramovich leading the Titans in scoring with 11. And ahead, oh, great block there from Gulf Coast. Putting it right back off the glass. Christian Harris to the basket, dumps it down. Did a good job recognizing that Cole Sieg, not the best perimeter defender and utilizing, or just blowing right by him. Jamari Piercy with a great spin there to the basket, but two hands to the back sends him to the floor. And we'll see. And that was going to be a shooting foul. They say he was in the act. They did look like it from here. He 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 spun, and and that's how he was fouled. He got pushed right from behind as he was going up for for the layup. Interesting that Ellingsworth, looking like he's getting set to check back in. He just started this second half, and not more than a minute and a half in. He's come out and now come back in. So he'll come back in for Taz Johnson. And Johnson had a big rebound here not long ago to start this half. Jamari Piercy off the mark, but they're going to call a violation here on Eastern Florida. Nicolsi got a step in just before the release of the shot. So he'll get another chance here as he missed the first time. Piercy just a 60% foul shooter. He's hit a couple today already. Mm. And off the mark again. Colsey getting the board this time, not jumping early. Colsey's favorite player is Kevin Durant. He's kind of built like him as well. I could sort of see it. Oh, and Aquino. Loses the ball back here's, to Gulf Coast. Here's the guy they had to watch out for coming in. And Andre Young, just two points in that first half. Carlos Cortijo, one on one. And right in the lay on the left side. Love the way he adjusted there midair to go to that reverse layup off glass. Now Andre Young. Looking for something here. Oh, oh good screen there from Ellingsworth. Great screen, mismatch off. On the three, Carlos Cortijo pushing the pace again. Oh. And same exact play twice. No, he kicks this one out. 
Oh, just off the iron from Luca Kolsig. And there's a vision there. Gulf Coast sees it. Just barely Luca going to grab the board. Fantastic job getting back from uh, Alan Trenka. We saw his effectiveness offensively, and now does a good job getting back on that side, leading to the scoring opportunity. Eastern Florida, nine-point lead. Their largest was 10. And Andre Young looking for something here. He's got the mismatch down low, but a double team. And Finds the open man. When there's a double team, there's got to be someone open. And off the side of the glass, taking it back the other way. Zuzic slowing it down a little bit as they hand it off to Owen Aquino, back to Trenka. Just excellent job rotating off every double, uh, the pair of doubles on that last possession. Back out, kicks it all the way around. Zuzic for three. Ball movement making things very confusing defensively for the Commodores, not sure who to defend. And so there's gonna be our first timeout of the half from Melbourne, Florida and Eastern Florida State College. You're following the 22nd annual Florida College Men's Basketball Shootout. It's been a timeout on the floor as Eastern Florida lead, has their largest lead of the game, 49-37. This is the 22nd annual Florida College Men's Basketball Shootout. Eastern Florida State College has a two-year aerospace technology degree. We are the only school in the state of Florida that offers this degree. The program is taught by industry professionals. All of the instructors are currently employed or previously employed at NASA. The program manager was part of NASA for 35 years. So you're not getting just somebody that has a degree that's teaching you stuff about aerospace. You're learning from people that actually worked in the aerospace field or currently working in the aerospace field. Welcome back to Eastern Florida State College here in Melbourne, Florida. Again, you're here at the 22nd Annual Juco Men's Basketball Shootout. A very tight race here, but now Eastern Florida taking a bigger lead as they lead 49-37. to Matias Zuzic hit a straight on three, which led to the timeout from the Commodores. He did shoot 42% from deep last year. 42% um, here to start this year as well. So the three ball, not somebody you want to leave open if you're an opponent. Not at all. And again, we were talking about how the three ball wasn't super important in the first half. But after seeing the defenses of both these teams, that three ball is very important because that interior is very hard to get into and, and even break the mismatches. We've seen a lot of mismatches down low, but we see a lot of great defense no matter what. And Gulf Coast gets this one in pretty easily. Piercy. Kicks it up to Andre Young. Again, a freshman averaging 12 points per game. Push off off the ball. And we'll see exactly, they haven't exactly signaled who it'll be on. Looked like it was an elbow down low against, against um, uh, Gulf Coast State, and that's exactly what the call is going to be. So Eastern Florida will take it the other way, and just an opportunity to maximize their lead here as they're able to get the ball in easily. Luca Kolsig. Owen Aquino bringing it up. He's brought the ball up quite a few times today for being the center. He's that, brought it up at least 10 times. That's the Nikola Jokic effect. Yeah. <laughs> and foul there. Moves pretty well for a big two. Very well, he brings it up the court just as fast. Moves it fast and he's all of 6'8", 220. He's been in the beast in the paint as well, especially with the mismatches. He takes advantage of every single one that he can. And not just that, his shots have not been falling for him tonight. But he sees that it seems like it's okay because he's passing out and finding opportunities for others to succeed there on the floor for Eastern Florida. Here he is with the ball, looking for an opportunity. Hand off to Carlos. Cortijo making a move to the right. Nice and to Luca. Oh, almost with a slam. And Christian Harris looking to start something. Starting with Piercy, Piercy to the basket, blocked away. Luca Colsey gets up there. Sends that ball out into the hallway. Colsey, we've talked about his defensive prowess, particularly on the glass, just great rejection there, adjusting and seeing the shooter falling to his right. Someone's gonna have to go out to the hallway to get that ball, there we go. He blocked that thing almost to the next classroom. 
Gulf Coast inbounding now. Christian Harris is going to be open at the elbow. He'll pull. Off back iron. Aquino with his, another rebound here. Something that surprised me is that Gulf Coast has gone away from that uh, fast-paced transition offense we saw earlier that was very effective for them, and they've seemed to settle for a slower-paced half-court game. Exactly. It looks like they're trying to score more off of plays and shots uh, rather than the exactly like what you said, the fast-paced layups and breakaways. So, And it's kind of reflecting onto the scoreboard as we have 15 minutes to go here in the second half. Still plenty of time for Gulf Coast to make somewhat of a comeback. I mean, we saw earlier 10-0 run in that game, the fourth overtime. And there it is. Carlos Cortillo lets the crowd know as well with a little turnaround. Eastern Florida starting to feel it, which is a great thing. They're starting to get momentum. Owen Aquino guarding at the top. And they say his Afen Trinka's hand got in there. Looked, looked like there was a little contact in there. That's the problem when you're a, when you're smaller guarding a big man down in the paint. The biggest problem is keeping your hands away. You got to keep your hands up. But they're going to call a timeout here. So from Melbourne, Florida and Eastern Florida State College, you're following the 22nd annual college Florida College Men's Basketball Shootout. Currently, Eastern Florida has extended their lead to 52-37. This is the 22nd annual Florida College Men's Basketball Shootout. Eastern Florida State College has a two-year aerospace technology degree. We are the only school in the state of Florida that offers this degree. The program is taught by industry professionals. All of the instructors are currently employed or previously employed at NASA. The program manager was part of NASA for 35 years. So you're not getting just somebody that has a degree that's teaching you stuff about aerospace. You're learning from people that actually worked in the aerospace field or currently working in the aerospace field. Welcome back. We're getting right back into the action here as Gulf Coast going to be taking the ball out of bounds down low. Bryce Simmons had the ball. And he'll take the ball down. Good little jump shot there from Turner Harris. He's got four points in the game now. And given the small sample size, that was probably one of their better half-court possessions of this game. A.J. Mm. Walker just off the front iron. Looked like Harris was trying to draw a charge before he had to quickly adjust to con uh, contest the shot. Turner Harris, look three, pushes in. And there's going to be a foul call here. We'll see what it is. Foul's on number two, A.J. Walker. And that's going to be on Eastern Florida. A.J. Walker picking up his third foul. Has been a very tenacious defender thus far tonight. Got to keep that up. He's got at least one or two steals as well tonight. And when they do play full court defense, he has been shutting them down. He's been in those situations. He's been defending the primary ball handler, um, forcing the out pass or a bad dribble. Seems like more often than not. First one's good from Turner Harris. It's, it was a lot of sharing the ball around for Gulf Coast in the first half. There wasn't really a clear someone who scored a lot more points than the other person. Gulf Coast has really been sharing the ball around, and everybody's been scoring. And a lot of great defense here. But I believe Gulf Coast just got a little bit too handsy with it. Yes. So Engram picks up his second foul. Eastern Florida will get a fresh five seconds to inbound. He'll get it in to Carlos Cortijo. Carlos trapped now with the with no dribble, but A.J. Walker bails him out. 
I love the energy that these Eastern Florida guards are playing with. Uh, the their ability to push the pace and slow things down, depending on what's needed, is um, done them well today. Absolutely. Even when he gets trapped here in the corner, they still get it out. And some great passes lead to that. And Owen Aquino with the rebound back to Luca. And even the teamwork from the forwards down below is incredible. Eastern Florida putting it all together now as they have a 13-point lead. And Gulf Coast now going back to pushing that pace towards the basket. That time doesn't go through. A.J. Walker right to the basket. He'll fake one up, and he'll have to just get it away to avoid the travel. Gulf Coast, Turner Harris with a spin move. One of the worst things someone can do as a passer is leave their feet. We tried to go up for the layup first, realized he didn't have it, and then just was forced into a bad decision. Exactly. As soon as he realized he would most likely get blocked, you know, he just kind of had to throw the ball yeah. to the closest teammate. However, there wasn't one really in the area. So Turner Harris back to the line now. As he cuts into the lead even more. And Eastern Florida is going to get four fresh players on the court. Again, that's what we talked about earlier. That's an advantage Eastern Florida has. They have a few more players on the bench. And you mentioned earlier that uh, this Gulf Coast team is uh, sharing the wealth scoring-wise. Harris, a very quiet scoring first half, but uh, got in the line a couple of times here now in this uh, second and uh, has scored a couple of points off of it. And Eastern Florida needs to get this over and a steal. Pass, dish off, and he's going oh, for the foul. Oh, great foul. job. Afantranka bringing it up the court. Spin move in. Erkins Ford doing a great job sealing it off inside to rip the ball away. Yeah, great job stopping this Gulf Coast momentum, and that's going to be a travel. Ball got stuck inside his elbow on that spin move. Just ended up taking one too many steps. Just a killer pair of possessions right now that have gone the way against Gulf Coast. It seemed like they were starting to build, up, build momentum find a little bit of pace and slow down uh, Eastern Florida State, but first um, with uh, the turnover inside and then the travel. Um, it's really got a, that's an unfortunate turn for them. And Coach Gaffney is gonna get a technical foul now. He might have been saying a, a few choice words that weren't very nice. So, Gulf Coast. Uh, Eastern Florida not able to make the first shot, but he'll get a second one here. Malavitz a surprise miss there. He is a 86% foul shooter. Actually missed a couple today at the line. Talking to the refs before the game, some of the nicest guys I've ever met in my life, so wondering where those emotions towards the refs were coming from. So you're saying they're undeserved. Uh, exactly. I mean, that wasn't a terrible call either, though. So Exactly. Maybe just a little bit of an additional overreaction there. But Gulf Coast, they have a lot of momentum. But Eastern Florida is going to get the ball back here. And good bounce pass down low. Here's Bogramovich, who took over that first half scoring-wise for the Titans. And Imondrik looking for a pass. And he's going to get it. At Fantranka. He's going to find a hole. Kick out to A.J. Walker. And I believe, yes, that was off the hands of Jackson Ellingsworth. So it's going to be Eastern Florida ball. And again, I mentioned before, something that seems to be a little problematic now for Eastern Florida is that they're leaving their feet when they're passing. Yeah, they're very out of control with it. And as a result, they're almost getting turnovers. Imondrick. There's a turnover. Yeah, definitely a, a traveler there. Picked up the ball and took two steps. Unfortunately, you can't do that, so Gulf Coast is going to get the ball. And they're trailing by 15, but again, they're a very quick team, and they're able to get quick buckets. Andre Young for two. That's what they've needed from him. Top score, just his second field goal of the night, or day rather. Exactly. They'll need more of that as Afantranka kind of lost possession of the ball, but he got it back. Again, a pass not on their feet. Results in the ball almost getting turned over there. But I believe, yes, it's going to be Eastern Florida ball. I was going to say, considering how um, 
let's just say not pretty that possession was. Um, the fact they were able to keep uh, possession there is something I'm sure they're not complaining about. Yeah, we've seen a lot of hustle from both these teams, though, and definitely not afraid to dive for the ball. When that ball is loose, they, are, we, they go for it. Offensive rebounds, it was probably a lot more in the first half, but both teams have really been going, attacking the rim for those offensive rebounds. Haven't seen them much, that much uh, here in the uh, second half, but again, that was the story early on. FN Tranka just off the mark. Andrea sees the vision. AJ Walker and one down. Good job reading this uh, defense, finding that space there to uh, reach the open cutter. So AJ Walker extends this lead to 15, and he'll go to the line again. That is now the fourth foul on Ingram. So he's one away from fouling out, and there's still just under 12 to play here in this one. A.J. Walker was one of the leading scorers in the first half with five points, but it wasn't really his scoring that was telling the story. It's really this defense that we're seeing right here. He picks up his man as soon as he sees him. He doesn't wait for half court. And you can see him watching that ball and staying with the man, not wanting a switch. Which is why they dropped the screener there to try and switch the matchup there. And Jackson Ellingsworth getting roughed up down there in the paint. And so he'll get two shots at the rim. And if Walker now picking up his fourth, and uh, if he's not able to continue, that's going to be a uh, tough loss for their defense. Now just one away from fouling out himself. Nice read there. Turnaround is off. Now A.J. Walker bringing the ball up. Favorite NBA player is Paul George. Again, makes sense. A lot of these make sense. They have a lot of the similar play styles to their favorite players. I mean, I'm here watching Erskine's Ford, a big, long, defensive-minded player. We see a lot of that in Jalen McDaniels, who he claims to be his favorite player. You mentioned the Kevin Durant comparison mm -hmm. earlier. Mm -hmm. With Cole saying. And so Eastern Florida gets the ball into Mondrix. And Carlos Corjito getting the ball out here, maybe resetting a little bit back down to Mondrix. He's looking for something. Oh, definitely a little bit of a travel there, a little stutter step. No, it's now his second travel in just the last couple of minutes. Yeah. Coach Eastern Florida definitely not agreeing with that. But either way, Gulf Coast taking it down. Down 15. Score 59-44, almost at the halfway mark. Gulf Coast going to have to turn on the engines now. Seems like Gulf Coast is trying to play Cajito like they were playing uh, Walker earlier, trying to create a switch there as he's been defending well as well. Bryce Simmons back into Taj Johnson. Johnson gets one in. It's exactly what they're going to need if they want to get back into this game. It's those quick layups that got them. That, had, that gave them the lead early on in this game and, and kept them close early on in the game. Now if they want to get back in, that's what it's going to take. But Carlos Corjito slowing this down. And he's going to get a wide open lane. Just barely a good read there for Andrea. Maybe the bounce pass was just a little bit too low for the 6'7 freshman. I mean, they had the right idea, though, looking for the cutter. It's... Um you would be hard-pressed to find a good fundamental basketball, and at least they're trying to execute it here. So Gulf Coast bringing the ball up the court. Angram taking it right, gets a screen. Trying to seal off uh, inside. They're, looks like for a while they were looking for Ellingsworth. And Piercy going to get a foul there on a Mondrick. Or, excuse me, Carlos Cortijo. It's going to be his second foul of the game. And sixth foul, so we're going to get to the bonus now. Or, no, next one will be bonus. Yes, the one and one. So now Gulf Coast will be taking it out. Piercy with the inbound. Gets it in quickly. And again, down low. And there it is. Cole Sagman trying to defend without fouling. Made the look fairly difficult. 
Does a good job offensively finding the glass. Those are going to be his first points of the game. And we're going to get a timeout here. For Fouls on number one, Carlos Cortillo, his third. No, it's, excuse me, it's going to be a, a foul on Carlos Cortijo. And I believe the bench may have gotten a warning, but. Looks like he extended his arm out just a little bit there, bringing the ball up. Looks like we're going to a media timeout. So from Melbourne, Florida, and Eastern media Florida timeout. State College, you're following the 22nd annual Florida College men's basketball shootout. Timeout on the floor. Eastern Florida leads 59 to 48. This is the 22nd annual Florida College men's basketball shootout. a successful career with a bachelor's degree from Eastern Florida State College. You can choose from nearly 25 tracks in today's top job fields of business, healthcare, and computer technologies with classes tailored to meet your needs on campus and online. A bright future awaits you with a bachelor's degree from Eastern Florida State College. To learn more, visit easternflorida.edu slash go slash bachelors. Welcome back into Eastern Florida State College. We are here for the 22nd annual JUCO men's basketball shootout. A little bit of confusion before we went to break there. I believe there was a warning on the Eastern Florida coach. What exactly happened? Yep, so there was the offensive foul on Carlos Cortijo, but afterward, um, Jer Jeremy Shulman, the head coach for Eastern Florida, um, was quite irate at the call and uh, walked over the half court line He's been doing it a couple of times, so they finally opted to warn him uh, for the uh, issue there. Yeah, so he's got to stay in his lane down there, or it's going to be a technical foul called next time. So Gulf Coast with the inbound here. Andre Young dishes it down to Piercy. Piercy trying to find an open opportunity, not going to find one. It's a good off-ball screen set by the big man, um, Ellingsworth. And just five seconds on the clock, and he gets the shot off. Andre Young starting to get his offense started. Carlos Cortijo, he sees an opportunity, kicks it out to Zuzic. He had a quality look inside, and he kicked it out. Yeah, good kick out there from both, from both guys, and then Zuzic gets a foul there. So we are not in the one-on-one -on -one quite yet. Inbound and that's clock issue. So Jeremy. Gulf Coast coach not very happy with that. Jeremy Shulman of Eastern Florida State also looks uh, rather confused. Yeah, I think that Eastern Florida had an open opportunity there, and it was kind of squandered by the shot clock mess up because I believe there was supposed to be plenty of time left on the shot clock. I think that's what they're discussing right now is how much time should be left on the shot clock. So they're going to go over to the table right now and review that. As of right now, they have 21 seconds on the shot clock. Still surprised we haven't seen Gulf Coast State try and uh, speed things up offensively. They call Andre Young for a foul, actually. His fifth foul, meaning he's done. Looks so like the ref's still trying to figure this thing out. They said that's his fifth. If that's the case, uh, yeah, he's fouled out. So we'll see if if, if they catch that here. Oh, wait, foul out. So he's not fouled out, my apologies. Gets one more. He gets six fouls. Before, but he's going to have to be very careful here with nine minutes to go. A lot of time left. Right. 
One foul for the Aaron A. Big three, Carlos Cortijo looking back into the crowd for the second time over there in the corner. I mean, you mentioned though, he's got the five fouls, so they're gonna struggle to defend, especially when you're down 12, you're gonna need that defense from all five guys on the floor. And Gulf Coast trying to fight down low and they'll still get the ball back. Uh, three Eastern Florida State players there for the rebound, but I believe it just went off of them. So it'll be Gulf Coast ball. And inbound here. Isaiah Nelson back to Andre Young. Back to Isaiah. Nice Bang! And that's gonna be Jackson Ellingworth with the put back dunk. Ellingsworth, great read on that. He switched sides of the lane there to come in and uh, follow it home. And Carlos Cortijo is calling for a sub as he's limping. So they're gonna have to get him subbed out, but Zuzic off the board. Luca Colsey looking for something down low. Kick out to Afintranka to the rim. No call there, but he's gonna get the ball back. Owen Aquino, three. And that's going to give them a big lead now. They lead 65-52. Again, Carlos Corjito limping around. They're trying to get a sub in for him, but they're going to need a whistle in, in order for that to happen. Andre Young dropped Luca for a moment there. And Owen Aquino taking it up. And he gets it all the way. Nice that's going to be a move. foul. It's exactly what they needed. I think it was on Ellingworth. Yes. Sorry. Nelson Odota. Team seven. So, so now we're in the one and one. Carlos going to the bench now. Maybe check out that ankle, see what's going on. See if he'll be able to make a return for this game. Regardless, Eastern Florida State's in good hands. They've got A.J. Walker coming in. Looks like Carlos is just stretching out down there. Doesn't look like anything too serious. Maybe just a little bit of a rolled ankle. And, uh, you know, most of the time with those, sometimes you have enough adrenaline to, to come back in the, in the game. But, you know, they're up 14 right now. So I don't think that's a big concern for them. Carlos has been a big factor for them, pushing the ball up the court and being a momentum factor. But, again, nice little 14-point lead. They might not want to risk it. Cole Sag now just called for the loose ball foul on the box out attempt. So to the line goes uh, Gulf Coast State. Me Tank Washington, another freshman at the line. He knocks it down. I mean, for a team to be seven and three, like Gulf Coast. State is, and they have freshmen up and down this roster. It's six that have counted here, and they have no one older than a sophomore on this team. A very young core, but Tank Washington, one of the only ones from Florida. He's from right up the road at Panama. Oh, oh nice leak out. Zuzic up for the layup. So they'll get their 14 point lead right back as Gulf Coast still pushing this pace. Angram That's looking for an open teammate. That's what they've needed uh, throughout the bulk of the second half. Now they're finally doing it. Oh, and Aquino rises up. And he's able to get that ball. And so A.J. Walker, and they're finally slowing things down here with seven minutes to go. They'll probably want to utilize all of the shot clock. A.J. Walker, nice move to the basket. Kicks out to Owen. He's got this quick herky-jerky movement about his game. That... Luca for three. Bang! Hits it again for three. And that's gonna extend their lead 71-54 now. And so we're gonna get a timeout here at Gulf Coast. Eastern Florida currently leads 71-54 from Melbourne, Florida and Eastern Florida State College. This is the 22nd annual Florida College Men's Basketball Shootout.
Welcome back into the 22nd annual JUCO men's basketball shootout. We have Eastern Florida here pulling away a little bit. They lead 71 to 54 with seven minutes to go in the second half. And Carlos Cortillo doesn't look like he'll, he's coming back into the game for Eastern Florida. We saw him limping around. He didn't exactly go down with an injury, but he was definitely limping a little bit. He looks all right over there on the bench, but probably not going to be coming in with a big lead like this. I was just going to say that. I mean, it's a 17-point game, and again, even if it gets tighter, A.J. Walker is serviceable enough to where down the stretch you can trust him both defensively and offensively. He's made plays that have uh, greatly contributed to this lead. And I believe getting the shot clock all set up and ready to go now. Make sure it has 25 seconds, not 30 on it. And here we go, Andre Young swinging the ball around. Andre Young with the ball back. Screen from Ellingworth there trying to create space. And Harris gets it inside. And that's gonna be two for Gulf Coast. And some more full court giving them trouble. Afan gets a good pass to Luca. Eastern Florida, after struggling with that full court pressure early on, have uh, seemingly found their footing a bit, though, dealing with that. Afan Trenka finds Owen Aquino being oh. pressed heavily. Great job by Ellingworth keeping him well outside. That's not his forte in his game. Five seconds on the shot clock. Over to Afan Trenka, two seconds. Tries for the layup off the rim, so the shot clock resets. Eastern Florida fighting for it. They get it. How did he come away with that? I couldn't really tell from here, but It was great bouncing effort. all around off of Gulf Coast. However, Eastern Florida going to get the ball back. Lucas, staying warm, hits that three. With six minutes to go here, Eastern Florida leading 71-56. to 56. And Eastern Florida will get the ball back. Luca will inbound. Gulf Coast, again, as we mentioned earlier, is doing a great job dealing with uh, covering the paint, but it's led to too many open looks for Eastern Florida State to take advantage of, and that they have. Yeah, you got to give some of this credit over to the Eastern Florida State coach, Coach Shulman. He was the youngest coach in Tennessee AAU history at 16 years old. He's always wanted to be a coach, and that's exactly what he ended up doing. And he's, he's done amazing things here. Again, as I said earlier, inducted into the Hall of Fame. And he's won Southern Conference Coach of the Year for four straight years. Oh, and Aquino kicks it out to Zuzic. Zuzic finds an open path. And Got he'll go up. on his feet. Good job with uh, the ball fake there before going up. So Zuzic found a good spot, got that pump fake, and was able to go up and get fouled. Third foul now on Illingworth. Rattles home for Zuzic. And Gulf Coast gets some fresh people in here. Ellingworth will remain in the game, it appears at least. And again, just going back to Owen Aquino, number 23 for Eastern Florida. He played with the U-20 FIBA uh, World Cup uh, for basketball, where Spain beat Slovenia, and he was a big part of that reason for beating them. So just to be able to play in the FIBA at such a young age, that's incredible. Andre, and oh. there he goes with the block against Andre Young. So now we see exactly why he was in FIBA. And he dishes that one to Luca, and Luca's gonna get that one in. Not gonna be an assist, but still perfect pass into Luca. And their lead is now up to 19, their largest lead of the game. And Piercy, bunch of up fakes, back out to Andre Young for three. He's got it. Three pointer, Andre Young. He seems to be a lot more confident in his shot than he was early on. 
Yeah, that first half, we just didn't see a lot of shooting from Gulf Coast in general. It was just a lot of interior layups. Uh, and now we're seeing quite the opposite. And A.J. Walker open out at the three-point line. Just trying to waste as much clock as possible here. Ten seconds on the shot clock. 4.45 on the game clock. Nice move baseline. Kick out to Luca. Three seconds on the clock. Colsey, no good. But Andre Young pushing this ball up. Seems like they've been wanting to run, the, uh, run AJ through. AJ Trenka up. behind the back. Take it all the way for a layup. Oh. No and they're calling it no basket. Luca Colsey touched it on the way down. We saw something like that in the game earlier in overtime when they had that offensive basket interference as well. I don't know. It just looked like that ball was already long, long in the hoop. But they're going to take away those two points. And the Gulf Coast is kind of cutting into this lead. And because of that, we're going to get a timeout here. So there's been a timeout. Eastern Florida leading this thing 75, Gulf Coast 59. This is the 22nd annual Florida College Men's Basketball Shootout. We'll be right back. Florida State College has a two-year aerospace technology degree. We are the only school in the state of Florida that offers this degree. The program is taught by industry professionals. All of the instructors are currently employed or previously employed at NASA. The program manager was part of NASA for 35 years. So you're not getting just somebody that has a degree that's teaching you stuff about aerospace. You're learning from people that actually worked in the aerospace field or currently working in the aerospace field. Welcome back to Eastern Florida State College in Melbourne, Florida for the 22nd annual JUCO Men's Basketball Shootout. Eastern Florida pulling away a little bit right now. They currently have 75, Gulf Coast with 59. What's been the key so far to the win? So Are far, you? it's been a lot of rebounding, a lot of interior play. They've been following their missed shots quite well, and it's been the solid fundamentals too, particularly on the pick and roll and backdoor cuts. They've, uh, Gotten a lot of damage done that way. And Gulf Coast looking to get more into this lead. 16 points. They were once down 19. Still cutting into the lead. And that's going to be a foul called on A.J. Walker. Walker a little overzealous there. Just barely overextended, which didn't allow Jackson Ellingsworth to get the ball. Fifth foul on Walker. So they're going to sit him down with four minutes to play now. And Carlos Corjito is going to come back in. Doesn't look like a limp at all. So most likely just a little bit of a rolled ankle or something like that along those lines. General soreness. Uh, exactly. Something he's already been dealing with or, you know, could be any of the following. Good to see him back out here because A.J. Walker at five. You don't want to see someone foul out in a game like this. No point. So Luca gets it over to Carlos. Great job by uh, Gulf Coast to try and trap the ball handler. And they were, but Afan now open for the layup. Nobody behind Afan Tranko, so he had an easy layup there. Here's Young. He needs to get going. I mean, he's done much better here in the second half. And picked off by Aquino. He gives it up to Trenka. Trenka is going to slow it down here. Trenka fighting for the ball. And that's going to be a foul on Turner Harris as he was holding the arm of Trenka. 
It felt like uh, Trenka was getting a little too comfortable there near the timeline. Thought he was. I was. Thought he was maybe going to step back over it for a second, but what do I know? Well, you want to talk about international um, skill set we mentioned before with um, with uh, with Owen Aquino that uh, Trenka was on the U18 Bosnian national team in his past. A lot of, a lot of different talents on this team, on both teams. So on their online bios, you want to talk about talent here for a second. Uh, Aquino, uh, he was asked about what his uh, top talent is, other than basketball. And I just appreciate the genuineness in this answer. His answer, sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, that's a good answer, and that's especially something good to have with basketball especially after playing a full 40 minute game. You gotta have that secret right. talent. So, Gulf Coast getting the ball back after two missed free throws there. Good screen by Ellingworth. But he loses the ball, so Carlos Cortijo sees Trenka. I don't think Ellingworth is ready for the pass. Gulf Coast, Andre Young. And they say his foot was on the line, would have been a two anyway. Jackson Ellingsworth gets that ball right back up there. So Luca's got it. They're gonna try to trap him here. Let's we'll see if he can get it out. And now it's a two on one. They're gonna slow it down. Pass nearly hit the roof. 17 point game, two minutes, 40 seconds to go. And wide open man in the corner. Zuzic off the mark, but good rebounding. And knocked back in eventually by Luca. He's been on a tear this second half. Good job by Trenka recognizing where the ball was in that tight space. And then the follow there, as you mentioned, by Luca. Turner Harris off the front iron, gets his own rebound. Good hustle there. Ellingsworth fighting for the rebound and travel there. They say nobody had the, their hand on the ball, and so he moved. So uh, the ball is now going to go the other way for Eastern Florida. Just over two minutes to go here. I respect the effort, though, from Gulf Coast. Still fighting, even though they're in this deep of a whole 19 points and uh, 128 ticks remaining. Exactly. They really are still fighting to score here. And a little clean up on aisle three as Luca getting out there. Oh, and Aquino, uh, and it looks like Eastern Florida dropping back here. Nobody has passed the half court. Now they're all moving up. Maybe a, a different type of play here. Carlos Corjito trapped in the corner, has to throw the ball away. Luca reaches out and grabs it. Perfect grab. And Owen Aquino, he's going to get the ball out there. Minute 55 to go. Here's Ninth. another trap. And... Oh, timeout white, and so that is going to avoid the travel there from Turnka. So now we have a minute 50 to go. And they've, they've done a great job tightening up their D. Again, despite being in this huge hole, got to respect the uh, competitive nature that uh, these Commodores have in them. Exactly. Again, I just like to kind of talk about who the coaches here. I've talked about Coach Shulman quite a bit, but Coach Gaffney has quite a few accomplishments as well. He has set the record for most wins in a season at four different schools. He set the record at Georgia Highlands, Guilford Tech, Mohawk Valley, and Columbia Green. So a very, very skilled coach. And again, he started athletic, he started the athletic programs at two of those schools from scratch, and now they're still very highly regarded athletic programs. So both of these coaches, very highly decorated. He's been a winner nearly everywhere he's been, as you mentioned. Uh, led this uh, Gulf Coast program to a 20-win season in his first year a number of years back. And he's won 20 wins in all but one of those seasons. So Eastern Florida just trying to burn up some clock. 
And that's going to be a turnover here. Gulf Coast taking it the other way. Good job reading the passing lanes. And good take there. Re leads to the foul. Owen Aquino asking how so. But they're going to call it anyway. And Eastern Florida still leading 80-61. to 61. Has Aquino seen the bench yet? I don't... So headed to the line here now is um, Marcus Black, who started this game in the front court. And did have five points, or yeah, didn't do much in that first half. A minute and a half. Maybe a little audience distraction. I'm not sure if you guys can hear that. Someone just screamed out in the audience, and then the free throw is missed. I'm not saying the two are connected, but. And they're going to get a call down here. I believe it's going to be a, a, a foul call, or maybe the ball just barely hit out of bounds. Either way, still Eastern Florida ball. 127 on the game clock, 22 on the shot clock. Owen looking for an open opportunity. Carlos opening the corner. They see him, Zuzic, spinning inside Good. the paint. Good. Good ball fake, though, to keep the defender on the toes. Nearly bit at it, too, which allowed him to get the quick step inside. So they have their largest lead of the game, 21 point lead with a minute five to go. And a blocking foul there called on Turnka. Yep, his feet were still moving. So that's gonna take him to the line. And I believe we're in the double bonus now. So he's just gonna get two shots straight up, no one and one. He was just at the line a moment ago. He missed two in a row. His team coming into today just shot 65% at the line. Now for the second, another scream, and this time uh, this does go through. So their attempt to impersonate Diarza Rosen did not work out. Pass up to Carlos. Carlos looking to just burn as much clock as possible. Coming with a double again, nearly fell over the timeline. 45 seconds to go. Luca from the corner, just off the mark, and that's gonna be off Gulf Coast's fingertips. So Eastern Florida, gonna get the ball. And again, I mentioned earlier that the rebound control in this game is uh, for Eastern Florida State has been critical, creating all these second opportunities can't think of how many times, though, today we had a uh, play where the ball pinged around inside and we weren't sure who came away with it. And it seemed like nearly every time it was a white jersey. And a good pick and roll there. Aquino was open underneath, but they kick it around to Cart. And that's going to be off the rim. But Zuzic with an offensive rebound, 20 seconds to go, 16 on the shot clock. Just a few seconds separating the shot and game clock. They may just let this one run out in about three seconds. We're not. And five seconds, Trenka takes it all the way to the basket. And the ball's being batted around. Two seconds to go here. And he'll put that up. But if it goes, it does not. So, Eastern Florida State College gets the win. They're going to secure this win, 82. Gulf Coast has 63. So, a 19-point win. Yep, and that one now moves Eastern Florida State to 10-1 and one on this season. I mean, they, again, they've got it done um, wearing out, essentially, um, Gulf Coast State, and that's something I think they can lean upon moving forward. Exactly. A great showing from Eastern Florida State. They'll be looking to do it again coming up. And tomorrow we have some big games. Tomorrow at noon we'll have Northwest Florida State College versus Hillsboro Community College. And then at 2 p.m. we'll have Gulf Coast State College, who we just saw out here versus St. Petersburg College. So, right now we'll be going to a commercial break, but don't go anywhere as we have a post-game show coming up with Christian Raposa and Skylar Blaine. And for this broadcast, my name has been Joseph Lemelin alongside Carlos Mancia. Thank you. Eastern Florida State College has a two-year aerospace technology degree. We are the only school in the state of Florida that offers this degree. The program is taught by industry professionals. All of the instructors are currently employed or previously employed at NASA. 
the program manager was part of NASA for 35 years. So you're not getting just somebody that has a degree that's teaching you stuff about aerospace. You're learning from people that actually worked in the aerospace field or currently working in the aerospace field. Welcome back to 2023 Eastern Florida State Juco Shootout. This game between Eastern Florida State and Gulf Coast just ended. Eastern Florida took home the victory in their home court, 82 to 63. Uh, Skyler, it was a good game, but what did you see from Eastern Florida that really kind of gave them the, gave them the edge? I mean, you're coming into the second half. Uh, it was only a four-point deficit, but as we were stating uh, prior in the first half. Uh, Gulf Coast was pressing the whole entire first half. So what does that lead to? Fatigue, right? So we got into the second half, and these players just, it, it was you could tell it was challenging getting up and down the court. And Eastern, uh, Eastern State Col uh, Florida State College, the home team, just had their way. They, they pick and choose uh, how they wanted to penetrate the defense. They picked and choose on, on how they wanted to score, whether that was in the transition offense, which they had a lot of their points uh uh, Christian through the transition offense, but also too uh, the shooters came alive. Like we were talking about um, in the halftime uh, show, we were talking about how if you can continue to give shooters open shots, they're going to knock them down, and that's what Eastern State uh, College did. And not just hitting shots, but also getting that second chance opportunities. What do you think it was that gave them that edge over Gulf Coast at the board? And I'm not trying to beat that dead horse, but fatigue. <laughs> I mean, those uh, Gulf Coast uh, uh, honorable effort coming in here. Uh, trying a, an unorthodox scheme in which was press and, and try to uh, get turnovers immediately but in the second half when you're fatigued like that it, it leads to not I don't want to say bad fundamentals but it, it's hard for you to box out it's hard for you to chase after those loose balls because I mean let's be honest here your heart rate's uh, one of a track runner it, it seems like we're out here running the 40 yard dash and these guys are smoked so we saw earlier Northwest Florida played against the team that they played earlier, and they won 74 to 67 in overtime after Florida Southwestern came back after a 15 point lead. But we're going to see that Northwest team again tomorrow against Hillsboro at 12 p.m. What does Northwest have to do against Hillsboro that they didn't do today? Well, I think today uh, it, it was a pretty obviously you have the number one ranked team, so I, I think. As a viewer, as a fan, you get caught up in the number one ranking. You know, they're number one. Just because you're number one doesn't mean you can't get beat on any given Saturday. So, or whenever day you're supposed yeah. to play, excuse my language. But, um, no, I think that if they continue to uh, limit the turnovers, uh, create good shots for their shooters and create good shots for their playmakers, um, good things will come. And in the second game tomorrow, we're going to see this Gulf Coast Commodores team again playing against the St. Petersburg team. Eastern Florida's done, but what does Gulf Coast have to do tomorrow in order to secure a W? I mean, you just got to uh, put some energy in the tank. I mean, reserve some energy. I, I mean, I understand full court pressing in situational basketball. You'd full court press or you'd trap, but... Um, you got to be able to, to trust your players more in, in a one-on-one -on -one situation or in a switch situation. Not saying the coach didn't trust his players, but when you're playing against teams, um, they want you, in a sense, to full court press because now you're just giving them more of an advantage going into halftime. Their players are rested, hydrated. Your players are in there just you know, getting whatever they can just to be able to get back onto the court. That's about all we have for you today in day one of the two-day Eastern Florida State Juco shootout. Northwest, Flo Northwest Florida beat Florida Southwestern earlier, 74-67 to in overtime. And then Eastern Florida State took home the victory against Gulf Coast, 82-63. to Skyler, it's been an amazing time. One last second to tell you how, ask you how you felt about this entire day. Uh, I mean, I just want to give a huge shout out to the uh, Dan Patrick School of Sports Casting um, for giving us this opportunity to come out here and showcase our passion for sports and be able to storytell the way we want to and, and give us a platform to, to, to really enjoy sports. And, and that's a huge thing for us and everyone here, a part of the production team. It's been a, an amazing day and an amazing event. 
Tomorrow, Hillsboro will take on Northwest Florida at 12 p.m., and that game will be followed by at 2 p.m. by Gulf Coast and St. Petersburg. For Christian Raposa, Skylar Blaine, our entire production crew, it has been an awesome day hanging out with you, and we hope you join us tomorrow at 12 p.m.